All right. Um, before we get too far into this, don't get too excited. I'm not cutting wheat today, although I had seriously considered it. Um, I'm pretty sure this stuff is is ready to go. <clears throat> Teeter. Um, so, I could not believe how much moisture, well, when, and when did I check this? Last Monday before it started raining, the heads were still erect, which when they're still standing straight up, it means they're not, they're not ready to cut yet. When they bend over like this, it means you're getting close or already. Um, so I never in a million years figured with two inches of rain this week that it would have lost enough moisture to be ready to cut this early but i mean it's hard to do with one hand but yeah yeah right, right there the grain is pretty much the point where it's just it damn near falls out if you fiddle with the the head enough and if you bite it if i can get it with one hand here come on Damn it, I lost it. I need another one. They're hard and they crack, so I definitely think this stuff is, is ready to cut. That being said, I was kind of a little hot to trot about getting on it today. When I was down here checking yesterday evening, and the more I thought about it, it's like, you know, it's Sunday. Work on Sunday, fix on Monday. If I had already been if I had already been cutting wheat, I'd be fine with it. But I just never had any good luck trying to get a big project started on a Sunday. So I think I'm gonna let it sit one more day, dry down a little bit more. And uh I still have stuff to get ready. I gotta go. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna go to gra grab the loader tractor here, and go. I gotta go over to my barn and get the rest of the wheat chaff cleaned up out of the loft so that that's clean. So we got a spot stack, and I gotta go over to my buddy Ron's and grab my baler because I stuffed it over in his barn for the winter because that that was one thing I absolutely did not want sitting outside was that square baler. So we got to get that over here so I can go through it real quick. And then I have some odds and ends that I need to do just to tidy, tie up loose ends so I'm not having to worry about it the rest of the week. I got to get my yard mowed and some stuff like that. So I think as much as I want to try cutting wheat, it's Sunday. I'm just going to take it easy today knock out the rest of the small projects I need to get done to get to this point. And then we'll start cutting or at least poke at it and see what the moisture is. And if it's good to go, we're gonna, we're gonna hit it hard, but um, go after it tomorrow when I get home from work. Plus the elevator's close today anyway. So even if I started cutting, I got nowhere to haul it. And wheat tends to draw moisture if you leave it sitting in a truck so while it may be fine when you go in and cut it today if you leave it sitting in truck overnight and it gets humid which we've been having some heavy dews it could suck some moisture and it could possibly come up a moisture point or whatever because that was a problem i had with it last year is it kept it would suck moisture in a truck it would suck moisture in the bin last year we just couldn't get shit dried out so rather than having to risk having it set in the truck and draw moisture overnight, we're just not going to screw with it. So anyway. <laughs> what? At least she's skinny enough she doesn't knock anything down. Are you having fun? What's out there? <laughs> Teeter, what's out there? 
Watch out there. You gonna go get it? Tear. Watch out there. <laughs> That's funny right there. Tear. What's out there? Go get it. Anyway, we're gonna go throw the bucket on the tra on the tractor, and I might hook onto something else since I'm going over to my house and drag another piece of equipment over to the barn. And uh, we'll get the loft cleaned out. So we'll catch you guys here in a little okay. bit. Okay. I pulled Drake over with me. Get that in the barn. There's really not a whole lot left over there. Well, at least a whole lot of big shit. I got a I got the 38 drill. It's got to come over. I mean, I could drag it over here. But it's on steel wheels, so it's better to throw that on the trailer. I got, and I got to bring a load over with the trailer anyway. That way I don't got to hook the sickle mower up to something to pull it over here and just set it on a trailer. I was flipping through my keys the other day and realized this guy right here. That's my lockout tag out key from working at Bayer. I completely forgot to turn that in. Whoops. Good thing my lock was in the lock box and not on something. Of course, they'd have just cut it off, but. Oh well. I really need to just take it off the key ring so it's not part of the mess anymore. pitch everything into the bucket and I'm gonna need probably this and this And this. <laughs> One of these days I really need to build a better ladder. Because some of these guys are a little loosey goosey. <laughs> And I still got 22 bales left. These still might be going away because my uh, boss has a, I guess he called a failed subdivision across the road from the farm. It was supposed to be like upper end Chicago city at housing. And the development company, I can't remember if they went under or what the, what the exact situation was. But regardless, a couple, they had two houses up. And a couple, uh, one's a lawyer, 
One's a lawyer, and one's a dentist out of Chicago. Well, they're both out of Chicago, but one's a lawyer, one's a dentist. They bought the property and the houses, and now it's just a two ritzy ass houses sitting in the back of the field with a cul de sac that has nothing on it. But uh, one of them just put in a cool. Supposedly wanted straw to lay over when they um, finished putting or get the grass seeded, so that stuff might go away. He was going to talk to them. Just because it's a waste of, I wouldn't say a waste of space, but it can, the space can be utilized a lot better. I really need to get a loft like this on that side of the barn because with, the, with that beam across there, you can't utilize all the headroom you got, so you can't have anything. I can't remember if that beam is at eight foot or nine foot. Pretty sure it's eight foot, but you can't have anything taller than that beam because then you can't get it over there. So you got all that wasted headroom. And especially now if I'm gonna start doing hay, because if I get that little field in, there's actually another field down the road from mom and dad's that I could get for hay. They don't want it row cropped. I already talked to them about it. They said if they wanted anybody to do anything with it, they'd want hay cut off of it. Which right now it's just a bunch of damn um, like there's grass out there but it's like yard or like lawn grass and then it's got a shit ton of buckhorn in it so it would need it would need work there it would need planted to a decent hay crop but I get this little field of shellies going and I get all my stuff working there really ain't no reason to put in a little bit more hay and make money off of hay. I wanted to put hay in regardless. I just haven't because of lack of spot or lack of space to put it. Well, if I'm going to start doing hay, I'm going to need more loft. So might as well loft that over there and utilize all the headroom because you could probably get, I'm estimating probably the way it fills up because I had, if you fill it up to the beam all the way across is 300 bale and then you start losing room because you got to fill your peak so I'm guessing you get 500 small squares aside give or take um, so I mean and then by all rights if you framed it in right since you can't have anything in here taller than the door you could probably damn near put a loft in like come up here to this beam and loft it in the center and stack in the center too but i don't know if that's worth it because you're you're probably only going to get and you probably get another 200 bale in there so it might be worth it This was the first bale out of a baler, so it was a softy. I had that one thrown off to the side, so I got 23 bales.
What I really would like to do is the old barn over at mom and dad. The foundation has junk. There's to get a foundation under it, you would have to jack it up, knock the foundation out from under it, and lay up a new block foundation. And the whole foundation kind of went eh, so the barn is actually leaning backwards, and then the front wall and the back wall. The centers of the walls have bowed more than the outsides of the walls, so the whole barn's kind of like banana shaped a little bit. It's square at the roof line, but down at the bottom where your sill beams sit, it's right. So my thought, the basement of that barn is basically useless um, because it's so short. You would almost have to jack the barn up probably two more, another foot or another two foot so you can lay in two more rows of block and then the barn or then the basement would probably actually be worth a damn because that basement's shorter than this one. Um, so what my thought was rather than trying to jack it up and build a foundation would be to go in, build a dirt berm all the way around it and taper it so you can mow it and then fill the foundation with dirt pour a concrete slab and just have the barn sitting on a slab. And then you could get the barn all straightened out and reside it and because the roof on that barn is actually still in fairly decent shape. Um, everything just needs decked up and squared up and yada yada yada. But money. But then if I did that, that barn would probably be strictly hay or strictly bale storage. Maybe park something in the center bay, but that barn's not lofted at all. It's just an open, open bay barn, which is what this one originally was. Um, and that barn's actually about the same size as this one. This barn just built a hell of a lot better. Um, but, uh, stack both sides clear full which if I remember right that barn and hold because my neighbor used to stack straw and I remember stacking that was their straw barn they always stacked straw in there and I remember stacking straw in that barn when I was a little kid um but if I remember right that barn and hold damn near a thousand aside without the middle bay. So you'd have a shit ton of, you'd have a shit ton of storage for what I would be planning on doing, but money. But I'm I'm afraid that if something doesn't happen to it soon, one of these days we're gonna wake up after a windstorm and this is gonna be a pile of lumber. Which is partly why so many of those barns suffer that fate is they were built for a purpose. They really have no purpose in modern agriculture. And they're the first, unless you get a family farm that has taken a lot of pride in keeping their buildings up and are proud of the heritage of it. Those old barns are the first ones to get let go and bulldozed to make way for quote unquote progress. Because they're always the first ones that have fallen into disrepair once. Well, basically, as soon as the livestock was gone, the barns became useless, so the barns. Quit getting taken care of. 
and that's why we've lost so many barns. Which is a real shame because the architecture and the heart and soul that went into building these barns probably created some of the most beautiful structures we have ever built. We can take this one down and dump it. Yeah. My favorite part of this barn is still the. Well, I just love this this barn in general. This bar, this is the whole reason I bought this property. I didn't give a shit about the house. I love the barn. But my favorite part is still that stenciling right there on that beam from the lumber yard in Grand Rapids where they bought the kit. Oh, and I guess, obviously, that's Shelly's loaner car for now, but quick update on that whole situation. So apparently, Hyundai knew they had a problem. There was a recall on her car, but the reason her car didn't get done was because the VIN number apparently didn't fall into the range of VIN numbers that had the recall. And the recall was for basically they did a shit job of grinding the crank and the crank would eat bearings. That was literally what the recall was. It was, I'm trying to remember how they worded it. Poor surface machining on the crank caused reduced bearing, or caused reduced engine bearing life. Like, we have come so far in engine building technology and we f and they're failing on something as simple i shouldn't say something as simple because crank grinding is a very complicated process but with all the cnc shit we got now and the engine the technology we have now how the hell do you fuck up grinding a crank like how and then if you know you have a problem why why did it, why does it take so long to rectify the problem like because after they looked up the VIN number for her car. Apparently, it was in a spot where it was kind of, eh, it could have been, it could have it had the problem, it could have not. Like, you'd think it'd cost these companies a whole lot less money to just build a decent engine right off the bat and not have to blow all this money on recall shit. Like, and it's not just them. GM did the same thing with the 5.3 when they first came out with the, with the economy drop from eight to four cylinders. And they had the oil burning issue because they had shit rings in them. Like, just build a decent fucking engine. Come on.
Okay, we got the 060T back from Ron's, so it's uh, finally home. Um, like I say, I still put it over in my buddy's barn over winter because this this was the one thing I did not want sitting outside. Because combines and weather don't go well together, but balers and weather really don't go go good. Yeah, go good together. So I made sure this thing had a roof over its head the whole time. Um, but really, all I got to do to this thing is pull my twine knives off and sharpen them because I had one that was still kind of dull last year doing straw. And grease it and run it, make sure, I mean, it should be fine, but run it just to make sure everything's kosher and put the twine in it and it should be good. So, need me a three-quarter wrench. And I can't remember what I used to put the twine knives on because I sharpened them once last year, but I was ginger about it. This year I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive with it. A couple three-quarter inches. excited about having hay for next year I like making hay I just don't like making an overabundant amount of hay like for me like four four maybe five acres would be about right you get much more than that and trying to make hay and row crop at the same time if you don't have enough people is just it's not fun so It's got to be, I'll put that, I'll get a 4x4 four four maybe, to set that knot around. But if I could get, yeah, like I say, if I could get, you know, 4 or 5 acres, maybe 6 acres, because that field I was telling you about, is down the road here they used to have horses and they got rid of the horses and then they just let the the old pasture grow up so but it would need planted to something actually productive um but if i could get that that's probably about four to five acres and then that little piece that we're putting in now that would be, in my mind, that would be plenty. And if I did end up getting all that, eventually I'd end up probably looking for a hay bine just to make life easier. But for now, a sickle mower would be adequate, especially for that little field up under them power lines. You're gonna be a lot more maneuverable with that semi-mounted sickle mower I got than a drawn hay mower. the back and you really don't even need a backup wrench for these. the neighbor putting in work with their 066 they've actually got well they got two or three i 
Although it sounds like he's got a brake drag. Or that thing's just getting that tired, but damn, it's just a hay rake. That was the first 66 to show up in the neighborhood. They bought that thing at a swap meet in, I think, Wisconsin. And that was his, they bought it for his son. And then it was probably a year or two after when my 66 showed up. And then they bought another one that's a wide front. And I thought they had one more, but maybe they just had the two. Or maybe they got a Super 66 hiding back there. So I can't. He's got so many damn tractors back there that he's bought over the years. He's got two Super M670 Moline's, a G950 Moline, a, an 88 diesel, a, 70, a 770 gas. They got two 1086's. They got two 706's, one diesel, one gas. They've got a ZB Moline, a Farmall H, a Farmall 300, a Moline UTS, um, a Cockshut 30, a Cockshut 40, a Farmall F12, uh, did I mention a Moline ZB? I think I did. They got a Moline R. Seems like they got more minis. They used to have a G1000, but they sold that. He's got a nine, Case 930 Wheatland, a Case 930 Row Crop, a Case 400 Gas, a Farmall 460, a McCormick Deering 1020, I think. Seems like they had drug one of those home. I don't know. They got so much. I want. I really want the 88 diesel. That was a good running tractor. And then they tore it apart for some reason. And it's been sitting in the barn tore apart ever since. But anyway. Back to the project at hand here. Last year I sharpened this on a stone. And it wasn't quite good enough. And the way they do the back cut on these. A knife sharpener ain't going to work. So. You want to keep it straight. It is kind of that is dull. Er, it's not super dull, but it's dull. Um, shit. And you want to keep it even, so like doing it, trying to keep it even on a bench grinder ain't going to work. I'm half tempted to do the belt sander, but the paper on that's a little too aggressive. Okay, so I got the first one done already. That was my one I played around with. Um, actually, what I ended up doing that worked the best is um, Dad's got these scotch Bright pads for the air sander that have a... They're not like super duper abrasive, but they have an abrasive in them enough that they will remove metal uh, just, just a little bit. And that actually worked pretty darn slick. So I ended up just kind of real easy like. Actually worked pretty damn good. I was impressed.
it'll cut loose paper, it'll cut taut twine. I can do a little better on that though. The other one got sharper. And the nice part about this over like a sanding desk is here on the kerf, it's still smooth. It doesn't have like, if you were to use a regular sanding disc with sand on it, it would leave a scratchy surface. This one's nice and smooth, so there's nothing to cause a hang up. I think that'll work. I really just need to see about getting new twine knives made for this thing like I've been saying I'm gonna do. I've got that one brand new one that I was always gonna send in for a template. Damn it. Okay, I don't see. Okay, there's that. So all I gotta do now is grease it and I gotta go get the twine out of the barn. We'll drop four twine balls in it. Twine bales, balls, whatever you want to call them. Then we'll hook it up and roll it over.
All right, we're ready to test run it. I had to switch tractors because I had the draw bar too short in the 1600. I didn't feel like pulling it out, so. I just went down and got the 66. Grease, twines in it. Should be good. gonna bother oil in the change because they're still soaking wet from when I did it last year so let them be because the twine was loose and improper twine tension will give you hell in an otter. Actually, improper twine tension will be cause symptoms that you may, may think is something more complicated and it's really not it's just you need to tighten up and or loosen up your twine one of the two I don't care how many slow motion animations you watch and otters working they're still magic some they just they just do what they want So, I think we're good. Any sounds everything runs smooth it's gonna need shined up but the only thing that can do that is run the material through it so 
guess I can go ahead and stick this in the shed for now. And I think that's pretty much it. I think I gotta throw the battery in my grain truck real quick because I've been pulling that out while it's sitting to keep it on a battery maintainer so the battery stays good. So I gotta do that. And I gotta throw the PTO shaft on the cart and grease it real quick. But other than that, oh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put fuel in the 7300 so it's ready to go. But other than those little things, I think I'm pretty much ready to rock, as far as I know. So. I guess that other stuff isn't even really worth video and it's just little nickel and dime shit so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that done but as far as the big stuff goes Baylor was the last thing I needed to do so I guess that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one hopefully if mother nature cooperates cutting wheat